Die deutsche Literatur- und Kulturwissenschaftlerin Universitätsprofessor Dr. Eva Horn war an den Universitäten Frankfurt, New York und Basel tätig, bevor sie 2009 an die Universität Wien berufen wurde. Sie analysiert in ihrem neuesten Buch »Die Zukunft als Katastrophe«, wie wir uns mögliche Szenarien der Zukunft vorstellen, warum wir das tun, welche Implikationen und Quellen dahinter stehen und welche Funktionen diese Szenarien für die heutige Politik haben. Erfahrungen mit Politikberatung im Hinblick auf mögliche Zukunftsszenarien hat auch unser zweiter Diskussionsgast. Professor Dr. John Casti arbeitete unter anderem für die Rand Corporation, eine Denkfabrik für die Beratung der US-Streitkräfte, bevor er eine Professur an der Technischen Universität Wien innehatte. Im Jahr 2000 wurde er zum Proteus Project eingeladen, um Szenarien auszuarbeiten, wo die USA 2020 stehen werden. 2012 gründete er das X-Event Center in Wien, eine Einrichtung, die sich der Erforschung von Extremereignissen, sogenannten X-Events, widmet, mit Partnerstellen in Singapur, Helsinki, Tokio, Seoul und New York. Meine Damen und Herren, zur wissenschaftlichen Diskussionsrunde des heutigen Abends begrüßen Sie den wissenschaftlichen Leiter von Academia Superior, Universitätsprofessor Dr. Markus Hengstschläger mit seinen Gästen Eva Horn und John Casti. Eva, um, all the speeches tonight already reminded us that currently there are enough crises going on. I mean, there is, when we think about Ukraine and Krim, when we think about the financial crisis since 2008, we are still struggling with. You are concentrating in your scientific work on literature, books and movies and how people describe crisis, catastrophes and how they deal with these things. Why do you think is there such a fascination for so many people all over the world that Hollywood is presenting us, I don't know, in a very short term period sequence every two or three months, movies about crisis and catastrophes. Why do you think are people so fascinated by this topic? I think at the present we have a feeling of threat, of an imminent crisis. We experience crisis, we experience catastrophes, um, and we feel like something is coming, but we don't really know what will come. So catastrophe or crisis fictions give us different scenarios. It's imaginations of what may come, but the advantage of these fictions is we don't have to live through it, of course. We can sit in our armchair, eat popcorn, and look at a, a post-apocalyptic movie and survive it. Um, but it gives us a feeling of what would happen in a given disaster scenario, how people may react, how people will also emotionally react, will they eat each other up, fight each other, will it be war of every man against every man, or will it be cooperation, empathy, you know, helping each other out. And fictions can give us a picture of that, but may even educate us to a certain degree. We discussed this this afternoon give us strategies how to, you know, behave in a, in a given crisis or what I think is even more important, how to prevent it. John, to survive crisis, right? I mean, the, this afternoon you presented your models about X event and what the X center is doing, and I think you have to do that this afternoon, this night again, because we people only in the audience were not around. But one of these major issues you said about X events is we need to survive them, right? So what is an X event? How do you approach this issue? What is X Center doing? Well, first of all, the X event for me is an event at the moment when a current trend, whatever it is, employment, economy, your life, is changing. Generally speaking, you're in a trend, and no trend lasts forever, and when the trend is changing, and if it's changing rapidly, and if it's changing with big impact, maybe negative, maybe positive, then you're experiencing what I call an extreme event, an X event. And of course, the X Center that I formed in Vienna a couple of years ago, its mission is really to try to understand how to anticipate 
these kind of events. I don't think it's possible, even in, in theory, to formally predict an X event in the same way you do prediction in physics or astronomy. But I think we can anticipate when we're getting into the region where we have to be careful, where an X event is much more likely to be occurring and to prepare for that survival. So the, the thing is all about to survive, but um, the governor of Upper Austria were to some extent implicating that X events must occur in his speech so that change is possible. What if we don't survive? Well, first of all, I agree completely with the governor that X events are a necessary condition for human progress. So the idea of preventing an X event preventing one from happening, first of all, it's not very easy to prevent these, and it's not even totally desirable, because without these extreme events, human progress is not possible. So the real issue is, first of all, survival, but how to benefit from that event rather than be a victim, and how to recognize that the event will create new opportunities, it will create new niches, if you like, for products, services, new ways of, of actually doing things, and that this is the engine, if you like, of history of creating new opportunities and survival. So you want to figure out how you're going to be a beneficiary of the event, not a victim. So it's, it's survival is necessary, but it's only the first step. When it comes to survival, and when I ever think about Hollywood movies, there's always one of these heroes, a good-looking young guy, who survives, right? And he, latest since James Bond is, by the way, also saving the whole world. And, you know, and he has a lot of fun doing that, meeting a lot of very interesting people during this time. <laughs> what I want to say is, I mean, is this kind of reflection or kind of a mirror, what happens in these movies, what happens in the books over the centuries, in the literature, of that how we cope with things like that? Or is it just that it is before we deal with these issues? Is it something where we can take something out and say, this is it, how people will behave when crises come up in the next time? Sometimes what... Well, you, we should not think of fictions as something that's totally out there. Normally, they're quite well-informed. Authors really, and our directors really do research before they come up with something, and then they spin it further. They spin it to, to an extreme case, to some, something that looks like fantasy, but who would have bought a scenario with planes crashing into high-rises in New York. I mean, it's, wow, this is way too much, you know, uh, imagination. So, in a certain way, um, what you can see in fictions is almost like an experimental situation. I mean, um, futurists, uh, futurologists, yeah? Does that um, people like John Casti, who research about what may come, use scenarios or use simulations to run, in a certain way, a hypothetical case. I think we should look at fictions that way. Normally, what comes out in most of the fictions is that human behavior deteriorates a lot under pressure. When resources are scarce, people tend to rather take care of themselves, protect their family, but not their neighbor. But what you can see is also that sometimes cooperation might be leading you further. So in a certain way, um, we should see these fiction as test situations that can teach us something about what we should expect from our neighbors, but also what might, what might be a successful strategy in a disaster. As being a think tank and a do tank that should counsel politicians, and they, you know, together with society in general, they would hope that people like you can predict X events. What's about prediction? How reliable is that? What are the approaches? 
Well, first of all, as I said a moment ago, I don't believe that prediction in the sense that you're accustomed to using that term in the natural sciences, I don't think it's possible in the human domain. And there are good reasons why it's not possible. So I'm not really advocating prediction, but I am strongly supporting what you just said about helping people with real problems in government agencies, in corporations, could be the military even. Uh, my center, and I'm happy to report that quite unexpectedly, uh, after I formed the X Center in Vienna, many people came to me and said, oh, the X Center, we need an X Center in Tokyo. We need an X Center in Helsinki. We need an X Center in Singapore. And now there are six or seven X Centers in different parts of the world, and six more waiting to come online. So it was a little bit like McDonald's, you know, uh, there's going to be an X center on every street corner pretty soon. But the main point is that these oh, X... When I go to McDonald's, it's really predictable what yeah. I get. And <laughs> furthermore, one condition that I made about X centers is only one X center per country. So I don't want it to be like McDonald's with one on every corner. But what I do want is that the X centers, in one way or another, devote their energies to understanding and anticipating extreme events. And not necessarily writing academic papers for scholarly journals. I'm a lot more interested in writing useful reports to people in government and industry who have real problems. Th those are my, my customers, if you like. Not, not the academic. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to write an interesting article, but it's a secondary factor. I'm much more interested in r working and understanding, helping people understand real problems. That's what the X centers are about. At the end, I would like to show how radical we are really thinking in a think tank, and I would try to test you uh, on the stage now. There was, the governor was saying crisis could be important to, um, let's say, drive the direction into change. Would you both agree with that? You said you already agree with that, I right? Would you also agree with that? I am more pessimistic, I have to say. There are, and John Cassie's wonderful book on X events tells us a lesson about it. There are types of disasters and crises that even if we survive them, really put so much damage to society, to economy, to health, that in a certain way we should also face the possibility that there are certain types of crises and disasters that we have to try to prevent, I wouldn't say at any cost, but practically at any cost. Climate change is an issue, um, ecological problems are an issue like that. If we really um, run into a situation where ecological problems will grow and dominate our existence. This is not an X event in the optimistic sense that later on we'll be, be, be better off, you know, but it will just go south, mm. as we say in America. I mean, I would, you know, I'm more on your side. I would also say I would do almost everything to avoid crisis and learn from the theoretical possibility that this crisis could have occurred and then do my mathematics statistics with that. But keeping being radical at the very end, would that, you know, when we think about the future, would you then recommend Upper Austria to induce some crisis to get some changes? Oh yes, that, that, that's a very a normal question. People always ask me, so I'm glad that you did. Uh, the answer is, is a qualified yes. I think that it's necessary to have these events, but they have to be controlled X events. We need to think and use our imagination and abilities to create events that reduce the stress in the system so that you don't get a major crash. And we do it all the time. People pump water down into earthquake faults to create, deliberately create small earthquakes. You don't get a big one. You burn down parts of forests so that the rest of the forest has a better chance to survive. You pull up weeds in your garden so that your uh, tomatoes grow better, and so on. So it's not like this is some kind of unheard of thing. But how do you do it with, when human beings are involved? It's okay for trees and 
tomatoes and earthquakes. What about humans? Well, that's a big challenge, and Bef I'm working on it. Before we, you know, induce thoughts that those politicians could be the better ones that induce the bankrupt of a bank because then things change rather than those that avoid that things happen like a bankrupt of a bank. I say thank you very much to you both for coming to Gmunden and thank you very much for this discussion.